Hello and welcome to Accutane favorites, I guess. Or if you don't fit in that category, dry skin favorites. These could be helpful for you. Or maybe you're in that like third camp of people that has no business hearing any of this info. I imagine that like your dog laid on your computer or phone or something and this video popped up. <laughs> Honestly, get that dog an agent because I think it's time that we have a remake of Air Bud. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> something that's always funny is animals doing human things. <laughs> like, it's so stupid, but it's so funny. Back on track, I wanted to share my starter pack, I guess, if you are starting Accutane, <laughs> or if you just have really dry skin or irritated skin that you're looking for some products. I realized that I mentioned a lot of these skincare things in my morning and evening skincare routine, but this kind of gives me a chance to talk about them more in depth and like the reasons why I actually like them and use them, plus some hair care products that have truly been lifesavers. Let's get started. So I've kept my skincare really minimal while I'm on Accutane, mostly because like you're not really like allowed. Like chemical exfoliants are a big no. But turns out there are still like a lot of great products that don't really fit in the actives category that can still transform your skin, which I didn't really know. <laughs> Anyways, skincare is also one of those things that's like really personal because it's a feeling. Like it's an experience for yourself versus makeup is like you are trying to emulate a look, right? Skincare is just a feeling that only you can experience. And everyone kind of has their own, obviously, skin type, but like own concerns that they want to focus on. So like, it's just like, it's a weird thing. Anyways, I know for me, I'm quite the texture snob. Like, I don't know what trauma happened to my childhood, but like, I really care about how products. Oop. Does that look okay? Okay, are we back? I'm falling apart. Okay, texture. Oh yeah, I really have a thing about how products like sink in and residue and consistency and I'm very picky, which is fine, I guess. It's just like, it's taken me a while to find products that I actually like and repurchase because I'm so picky. It's honestly so annoying, but you know what? So is my personality, so whatever. First thing, I'm just like bursting at the seams to talk about this product. It's the Crave Great Barrier Relief Skin Barrier Repairing Serum. I can't remember the last time I felt this deeply about like an inanimate object. That seems dramatic, but I'm so serious, honestly. <laughs> this made me believe in like topical skincare again. I really couldn't get over how this made my skin feel like deep scars in my skin lightening and just looking less harsh. And like this was the only thing I really like added to my routine. So like it is the thing. I know this isn't like necessarily for acne, but as far as just like being good for your skin, this feels good, it does good, things. Crave, I'm obsessed with you. Like, we're dating now. I don't know if you know, but like, I'm obsessed with you. The next thing is an obvious one. It's the Vichy Mineral 89. This is just a hyaluronic acid serum. Nice serum. It sinks in well. It is a little more expensive versus the Ordinary one, which is another one that I use quite frequently, but I find the Ordinary one doesn't sink in as well, and I don't love the dropper. I feel like that was fun for five minutes, and then it's like, I actually don't like when you have to do that to get a product out. But yeah, simple, basic, staple if you're on Accutane. Just make sure you're applying it to wet skin. Damp skin. Wet, damp, same thing. And the last like serum type thing I want to mention is the Cozarx Advanced Nail 96 Mucin or Mucin. I don't know how you say it. Sorry. Power Essence. I feel like I've had this for an eternity. I don't know. Like, I think it's because you only need like a pump or two, but I've had this forever. It works so well. The texture is a little weird, I'll admit. I think over time it's like improved. I want to say elasticity, but that's not the right word. Just like hydration. Like the plumpness in my skin feels more plump since I've been using this. <laughs> I want to do some cleansers. I'm sorry, I don't think you should spend more than 20 bucks on a cleanser, period. It's on your face for 30 seconds, 
and then it literally goes down the drain. Even the best cleanser in the world isn't doing that much. Serums and treatments stay on your skin and have time to work. These are two that I love and they're under 20 bucks, as they should be. <laughs> really basic cleanser I've been using is the Vanna Cream Gentle Face Cleanser. And I love it because it's just like so simple and straightforward, you know, like it's not gimmicky at all. I like to use it more so at night because I think it removes makeup a little bit. I do double cleanse and I like to use this as the double cleanser as I've previously shown. Like, I just think it's like a really good basic cleanser if you're looking for that. The next cleanser is another Crave product that I'm freaking obsessed with. It's the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. Once again, skincare is a feeling and this makes your skin feel so good. I don't know what kind of witchcraft that is, but like, I love this so much. I like it especially in the morning, just cause I don't know, matcha in the morning. It does a lot for just soothing your skin and making it feel so soft and hydrated. Like I can't get over the feeling you get once you wash your face. It's not that squeaky clean cause like you technically don't want that. That's like stripping oils. It's so nice. It looks a little gross though. So if you don't like looks, it, it looks gross. We overlook that, okay? Moving on to moisturizers. This is no surprise, the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion. I love this as far as you can layer and layer and layer and it never piles up and gets that weird waxy look. It wears well under makeup, it's inexpensive, and I like that it's a pump. I'm really weird about, maybe I should bite my tongue because of the next product I'm gonna talk about, but like, whatever. I think it's kind of gross when creams are in a pot because you're sticking your little fingies in there and like that has to be harboring bacteria. I'm sorry, it has to be. So I like that this is a pump in that you are getting like clean product every time. As I was just complaining about products in a pot, I do love this. I just like wish it came in a pump, but like you can't have everything you want. It's the use to the people, it's adaptogen. Adaptogen, we got it, all right? learning. Deep moisture cream. I love it because it's like a heavy duty moisturizing cream. It'll moisturize any dry skin you'll throw at it, but it doesn't feel heavy and it sinks in. What's the word I'm looking for? Like doesn't feel heavy. Yeah, I guess I just already said that. Already nailed it. <laughs> Crushing it so far. It is a little bit expensive but when I'm on Accutane it's my little treat yourself product and yeah. Next on to sunscreens, one of the most important things ever. I can't say I was like great about wearing sunscreen growing up or even like two years ago, but I have hopped on that train because I don't want early signs of aging on my face. And this is one of the like surefire ways to prevent that is to protect your face from the sun. So just a real basic one is the Elta MD skincare. I don't really know what this is like called. It just has like a million names in the bottle, but it's broad spectrum 46, which is like SPF 46, which is hilarious. Cause it's like, why 46? Like just like make it 50 or make it 45. Like what, what? who's in charge there. Besides the point, this is a great basic sunscreen. It's intended for acne rosacea and hyperpigmentation. I have heard some people say they break out from this, but like anything can make you break out. Like there, there are a million different factors. So I like this for just like a good basic sunscreen. Other than that, I wouldn't say there's anything too special about it. Two just like favey faves, like thank God for these products. They are the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen and Glow Screen. Oh my gosh, thank God we live, I guess 2021, I was gonna say 2020, <laughs> that these things exist, that like sunscreen that isn't like sunscreen exists. Did you see me all drop that? But I didn't cause I'm a professional. All right, like I've said with a lot of different products, I don't really know how this works, but I don't really care because it's so awesome. The glow screen, some people say they wear it alone. On my face at least, this is too shiny to wear alone. I wear it under makeup and it gives, just like the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, it gives like a glow from within look. I wear makeup like all the time. So it's nice that like a sunscreen can also kind of
kind of double as like a makeup primer. Same with this, but in a different effect, this kind of blurs and has that silicone-y like a pore filling primer. So it's also great under makeup. With both of these, you have to let them sink in for a few minutes before you go in with makeup or else they will kind of break up your makeup products and like kind of make it apply a little funky. So keep that in mind. But like, I can't say enough good things about this. I'm so glad these exist. Now on to the kind of treatment category, we have the infamous hydrochloride patches. These bad boys. You didn't think I was gonna make this video and not talk about hydrochloride patches? They are the goat of acne. They are the goat for acne? Yeah, cool, whatever. We'll check my grammar later. Let's start with the Mighty Patch first, the ones intended for your face. I have been a fan of these for a really long time, actually. Terrible, so um, I have like an acne, a hydrocolloid, colloid, whatever, patch on. Um, they come in original and invisible, but you still see them. Like I would never go hang out with someone like wear an invisible dot cause they're still really noticeable. Like you can still see it on someone's face, but they do lie flatter and are less thick than the original ones. Anyways, I will say these work best on white heads and like it's best to kind of like prep it. If it isn't like a pop to white head, you want to put like a hot compress to kind of soften that skin before you put it on so it will suck out stuff. Versus like if you put this on a pimple that is like starting out, it'll absorb some stuff, but it's not really gonna do a whole lot. There are a lot of cheaper, like Amazon has a million different dupes for this. I've also, I guess I don't have it with me, but the Cozarx ones, the Cozarx ones come in like different sizes, which is a nice thought, but I never use the small ones. I'll get a bunch of those and then I'll just have like a million different leftover packs of the really little ones. <laughs> Cause I just never use them. When you are purging, which basically just means like everything's coming to the surface when you first start your treatment, that's when these come in that are really helpful because they are large. So they cover a large surface area. However, you shouldn't rely on these because they're not intended for your face. Like the only thing that concerns me is when I use these, these a lot when I was first starting Accutane, seemed to be almost damaging my skin because they're intended for like anywhere else on your body but your face and any other skin on your body is less sensitive than your face. I think that if you're really on a budget, yeah, these can be great, but at the same time, cause you can fly through these when you have like a lot of breakouts and I understand that. And that's why I would like switch to these. But at the end of the day, you're tearing a bandaid off your face and it really hurts. Ooh, and I don't think that's like good for your face or skin barrier or anything like that. So that's where I would recommend these cause they are breathable and they are intended to be put on your face and they never hurt when you're removing them. I feel like there is a lot of hype around these and they are less expensive. I would just like use with caution. Okay, I gotta tell this story. So, it's a little tidbit. I was at the grocery store buying, I don't know, mouthwash, toothpaste, it doesn't matter. And the generic version of these caught my eye because it literally just says hydrocolloid patches. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are the same thing as this, but like cheaper, like dude. Literally a week later, they're viral on TikTok. Proving once again that social media crushes your dreams and is bad for your mental health. But dude, that pep in my step, that like whole week where I thought I had discovered something revolutionary, that was, that was pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. The only spot treatment I have been using like while on Accutane is the Versed Nixit Complexion Solution. It's basically just tea tree oil because I can't really use any salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide on a spot. The packaging is really terrible because it's like, you have to really shake it and squeeze and it's not the best. I do like the product, especially because like pure tea tree oil is too harsh on your skin. And so it is diluted with some rosemary oil. Now for masks, I know there's like conflicting data out there about a sheet mask and if it's like complete baloney, but I like them because 
It's like self-care. It like feels nice to have a glass of wine and like put on a sheet mask. You know what I'm saying? So for that, I love the Dr. Jart cryo rubber. These are really cool because they come with like a little tube of a serum that you put on and then you put the sheet mask over it. Again, I don't know if it does a whole lot, but it feels really nice and my skin does feel like it gets a full drink of water every time I use this. So I really like them and this is self-care, okay? So don't take that away from me. <laughs> the other mask I've really been loving with my dry skin on Accutane is the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. It's just a nice hydration. I don't know if I read somewhere or like on the box or something it says it's good as like a primer. If you like wear this for 10 minutes and then put makeup on it really plumps up your face before you apply makeup. But other than that like I wouldn't say there's anything too special. It's just like a really soothing mask. That's great if your face is really dry. I want to mention this, but I don't really know where it fits in. It's the Isle of Paradise self tanning drops in dark. This seems a little silly. Like when you have acne and like bad scarring, there's something about putting some like self tan on your face that makes your skin look better even if it's not. I think it just evens it out more or gives it more color. Maybe I'm just so pale that it like gives me a little bit of color, but it's just such a confidence boost when my skin is so bad. I just just mix a few drops of this into my CeraVe moisturizer at night and then I wake up with like a little bit of color. It's nothing too crazy, but it is a nice little thing that has been making me feel better. So let's talk about lips. I guess if you have dry skin, this is also for you, but like mostly Accutane, your lips, oh my gosh, they get destroyed. I wake up and I bleed and it's terrible. We'll start with the OG. It's the Palmer's Cocoa Butter Swivel Stick. I have loved this for I don't know how many years. This is always on me, like it's always in my purse. Everybody thinks it's a glue stick, so it's always a joke when I apply it because people think I'm applying glue to my lips and it's a great icebreaker. <laughs> It smells great. It's also like good for like multitasking. Like if you have really dry hands, you can basically put it anywhere on your body. And so it's a really nice multi-use product. And the other lip balm I have is the Dr. Dan's Corda Balm. I don't know how I found out about this, but um, it has 1% hydrocortisone in it. So it does kind of like reduce inflammation. Let's talk about this like duo. <laughs> I have discussed this before, but I really love the uh, Burt's Bees conditioning lip scrub to exfoliate. And then I layer it with the Laneige Lip Sleeping mask. I love the vanilla. This is no secret. This is a great lip mask. And then I often layer aquaphor over it. Okay, so I want to mention this like what a transition. My like number one tip for like lip care is like I showed in my skincare routine, wetting your lips, putting your daily moisturizer on your lips and then sealing it with aquaphor or petroleum jelly. Vaseline, but I don't like to put this on my lips because once again, tub, gross, squeezy tube, love. So like that is like first and foremost, my like favorite way to care for my lips. What I want to like remind everybody is that petroleum jelly doesn't have any moisturizing factors in it. And you need to put something underneath that's actually moisturizing your lips and then use this to like seal in the moisture. That's all it's doing. So keep that in mind if you are struggling with like really dry lips and you're like, Aquaphor isn't doing anything. Then put something under your aquaphor to actually moisturize your lips. Otherwise it's just like that pile of clothes in your room that you just like throw a blanket over. It's like, it's not doing anything. You know what I mean? That wasn't a great analogy, but <laughs> you get it. The next just life-saving product and it's lanolin. These are the same product, but uh, the lanolips is what I like actually keep in my purse to like apply in public because this, it's actually nipple cream for like new moms when you're breastfeeding, which is a little bit silly to like put on in public. You know what I mean? You just get this at Target in the baby section, no big deal, but it is a little bit like, ooh -hoo -hoo, I have nipple cream. You like revert back to like when you're in middle school and they're talking about how babies are made. It's just like, oh goodness. It's really good for hydration and it is a lot less expensive than the lanolin, lano lips. Oh my gosh. That's weird. I didn't realize we were calling for snow. Oh wait, that's my dry ass scalp. So like of pros and cons on Accutane Pro, you basically never have to wash your hair. Con, you have dandruff. I guess you don't technically have dandruff because dandruff is fungal or something. I don't know. You do have a really dry scalp. All you think of is your lips and your face is gonna be really dry. Turns out it's gonna be like your whole body and that includes your scalp. You need something to help that. Luckily, 
this was invented. It's the Brio Geo Scalp Revival. It's charcoal tea tree scalp treatment. I was skeptical about this, I'm not gonna lie, because it seems counterintuitive to apply to like a clean scalp before you blow dry. Why don't I just put it in whenever? And you can put it in whatever, but like that's when it's intended. I'm not kidding you. The first time I used it, maybe not the first time, but the second time or like the second day, I noticed that my scalp was like healed, completely normal. And I was like, I, what? This is actually my second bottle because you go through it pretty quickly uh, depending on how often you use it. Obviously that's with everything. But yeah, I think if you have really dry scalp or you are on Accutane, this is incredible. I love it so much. I also really like the smell. It smells really, you know, clean and fresh and it's great. Your hair like doesn't get oily. It just gets like matted and flat. And so for that, I've been loving the Amika Perk Up Shampoo. I've I've talked about my love for this basically because this smell is just like so good. <laughs> it's really good for just kind of like volumizing your hair and giving it a little bit of zhuzh. Brings your hair back to life a little bit. And the bottle's so stinking cute. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. If a genie granted me three wishes, it would be never having to wash my hair along with three more wishes and world peace. I'm not a monster. <laughs> No, but it's like legit the best. Anyways, because you don't have to wash your hair, but you should shower, this guy comes in. This is a shower cap. I love this shower cap specifically because I guess, I don't know if I have a big head, but I have a lot of hair. And this is like an extra large one. Like, look at that. Look at that. Look at how big that is. So it like holds all of your hair, even like the stuff at the bottom. That seems funny, but it's like, I have naturally really, really curly hair. Not really curly hair. That's a bit dramatic. I have wavy curly hair, whatever. Obviously I blow dry it straight and I want to keep it that way. So this is the way I do it. So a concern of mine before I started Accutane was hair loss because apparently that's a side effect. And I was really worried about that because I'm vain. I don't know. I talked to my derm about it and she claimed that the only person who experienced that side effect was also planning her wedding and was like, really stressed. So <laughs> she made it sound as if that's like not something I should worry about, but just in case I wanted to make sure that I was using products that like weren't damaging my hair. So I picked up these satin scrunchies and I love them. Why do I still have the box? Your guess is as good as mine. They aren't as damaging to your hair as like an elastic band. Like they're not causing any kind of friction in your hair. And the last hair product I want to talk about, I don't know if I've spoken about this before, but it's the Olaplex Hair Perfector in number three or number three hair perfector. Factor. This is basically like a hair mask that you use pre shampoo and conditioner. I like to like apply this before I'm gonna shower and leave it on like as long as possible. I'm talking half an hour, hour. I kind of have noticed a difference that my hair like reverse time on some damage. Not that I'm blonde or anything and have like color damage, but less flyaways or frizzies or anything. I mean, this is what I wanna attribute that to. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I have used this for like a while and I go off and on of thinking it's like really good or thinking it does nothing. Right now I'm on a kick of thinking it's really good. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. I don't think it's something that I like race to the store when I run out of it. I just think it's like a really good thing. If you are experiencing like a lot of damage in your hair and you need kind of like an R&R, &R, this is a really good option. Oh, last thing, that was a lie. I have another product. It's the Briogeo hair mask, like deep conditioning mask or whatever. So I was talking mad smack. No, I'm just kidding. I got the normal packaging in it and I was like, eh, I hate the packaging because you have to unscrew and it's like, uh, uh, awful, whatever. That made a whole lot of sense, right? They did come with a pump and I do have it, but it's in my shower and I'm too lazy to walk over there and get it. I use the shampoo as well. I wouldn't say that shampoo is anything to write home about, but I do like it. It's a nice kind of gentle shampoo poo that's hydrating. And that mask is so good. It just makes your hair feel so soft and like straight out the salon, you know? <laughs> definitely been a favorite and it does come in a pump. So if these come in a pump, I actually haven't really researched if these come in like different packaging. So maybe I'm the stupid one. I am eating my words. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and all the goodies and I'll see you next time. Bye.